Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update a custom ROM. So a lot of people ask me to do the monthly security updates for the stock ROMs, but I haven't really touched on how to update a custom ROM, as it's kind of not extremely straightforward I guess. I guess it's easier than updating using than compared to using factory images for the st people on stock, but updating a custom ROM still involves a little bit of checking and making sure things are going to go okay. So it is a little bit simpler, but still requires, I guess, the amount of brain work, the same amount of brain work as flashing the stock images. So right now I'm on Pure Nexus and I'm going to use this as an example. And I'm going to be updating to the, the second or the 15th of the second um, secure, sorry, no, Pure Nexus update, which uh, takes into the latest February security update uh, using the Verizon variant of the factory images. So I think that's the if I just quickly double check, it is the NUF26K and that is what it is based off of. So to do this, uh, you can probably follow this kind of the, the principles that I'm going to outline here for any custom ROM that you might be using, whether it's Resurrection Remix or uh, some other thing. But uh, this is kind of like the basics of how to do it and what you should be looking out for when updating uh, your custom ROM. So you will need to visit, of course, the the ROM thread, either on XDA or some other website, and you want to make sure this is where you're going to check for updates. Optionally, they might have a push bullet channel or they have a Google Plus community like Pure Nexus does, so you can follow that and they'll tell you whenever updates come out. Such as in this post, you'll see that they have updates for the second or the 15th of the second. So these are all the available updates for different um, Nexus devices. So you can see here also on the XDA thread, if we go down, we can also have a look at the downloads and change logs, and we have a current release download link, which takes us to the post, the XDA post of all the updates, where the updates are, and all that. So you can find all the links there to the ROM, Google Apps, and vendor images, as well as the change log. Now this might be different for a different ROM. Uh, if I can just pull up another example, I guess, real quick, uh, as to not deviate too far from what we're doing. For example, uh, let's say this one. Team Oct OS, and or well, I think what you want to be doing is looking at, I guess, where where you would download it, and maybe you want to have a look at the change logs. So these are things you want to keep your eyes on, uh, in case they do release an update, and when they release an update, they'll tell you what to do with the update. So I, th I don't think this is a very good example, but the example of Pure Nexus, if you join their push bullet channel. They'll tell you when there's an update, they'll push it out, and then all you have to do, and they'll pretty much take you to this or their own XDA post about this. So this is, uh, I guess, very centered on um, Pure Nexus as it's kind of a very nice ROM. So yeah, this is probably similar to other ROMs but may not be exactly the same. So if, in the case of Pure Nexus, they provide a link to the ROM, Google Apps and Vendor Images for the latest update. Now this is very important. So you will need to obviously download the ROM. You would. You won't, download, you won't need to download the Google Apps if you're already on Pure Nexus and have the Google Apps there, as we're not wiping the system when we're doing this. And this is also where you want to read the post and see if they want you to do anything different from the usual, I guess, dirty flash, uh, as we are not wiping anything, we're not making anything clean, or we, or if they suggest a clean flash, then you probably want to do that, uh, to, because they probably know best. So right now here he hasn't said anything about doing a clean flash or anything like that. So we're just going to go ahead with the dirty flash. And to do that we just need to download the ROM and of course the latest vendor image as well. So the ROM here uh, we'll need to download. I already have downloaded this. And of course the vendor image for the NUF26K which is what this the ROM is based off this new update. So that is also very important to keep in mind. Otherwise you'll have uh, some error messages popping up when you turn on your phone. Nothing too big but things like the camera and other things may not work if you don't keep your vendor image. Uh, on par with the the ROM, the ROM version, pretty much. So, if, uh, like what I was saying about Google Apps, you don't need to download this unless you wipe your system and you need to reflash Google Apps. Uh, so, just keep that in mind. If you're flashing Pure Nexus for the first time, then you will want to download Google Apps as well. But in the case of updating, you won't need to. So, here we have the ROM again and the vendor image that we've downloaded. And of course, you I guess it's never too. It won't hurt anything or anyone if you just have these ready, just in case. But Pure Nexus does not come with root already on there, so what you have to do is flash it separately. Now I'm not sure if, because I know that Pure Nexus has its own kind of kernel that it flashes on afterwards, a boot image, so you may need to reflash your root access 
uh, zip files here, so Magisk or SuperSU. You just need to download one or the other, depending on whatever you like to choose, and add their flashable zips to your downloads list, I guess. So currently I have these three downloads, which is Magisk, my, my rooting solution, and then I have the vendor image because I don't have the NUF26K vendor image, sorry, the NUF26K factory image available. I don't download that because uh, I'm not on Verizon or anything like that. Uh, so if you already have the factory image for the NUF26K, you can just extract the vendor image from within there instead of downloading it separately, it doesn't really matter. And of course we have the ROM. So all these we'll need to copy to our device obviously. Or yeah, it's probably best to do this, otherwise you can I guess sideload it, which is whatever you like, but I will plug my phone in and uh, copy these files over. Anywhere that you like, it doesn't really matter what folder you copy it to or anything like that. And what I'm going to do is just quickly do this. Let me turn it to transferring files. And we shall see that our device is here. And you might want to make a new folder on your internal storage just so um, everything looks neat. You can see I have some previous files here. I'm just going to delete those. Uh, you don't have to. It's just so I can show you a little bit easier what things to flash. So I'm going to copy all three of these files onto the internal storage. This won't take too long. Uh, some of these files are a little bit bigger than the others, but uh, roughly less than a minute should do just fine. So I'm going to wait for this to copy over, and then we're going to reboot into TWRP. Now I prefer using TWRP rather than using FlashFire of sorts, because in TWRP you can make a backup and you can pretty much always get back into the recovery to restore something if anything goes wrong. But uh, if you decide to do it through FlashFire, you kind of need the app to restore things, uh, to my knowledge at least. So if I happen to be wrong, then I guess you could use FlashFire if you like, but I'll be using TWRP for this tutorial. So we have everything copied, so we can restart our phone into the recovery mode. So we can tap on reboot and then recovery. Pure Nexus has this built in. So once you've downloaded the required files and that you've read the updating instructions, uh, generally if there aren't any instructions, you can just go ahead with a dirty flash, which I'm going to show you in this video. And once that is done, we should be able to reboot without any problems. So usually the steps for this is uh, I recommend making a backup. I've already done this previously and nothing has changed too much since my previous backup so I won't be needing to make another backup here in TWRP today but in the case that you don't have a backup and you want to create a backup, which you should, then go ahead and create a backup and I'll show you how to do that real quick uh, once we get into TWRP that is. Okay so we're in and to make a backup you tap on backup and the boot system data and you might want to back up the vendor image this time or the vendor partition. Now this is because the latest version of Pure Nexus has, uses a new vendor image, the NUF26K as we mentioned earlier and if you have to go back for whatever reason then you might want to select the vendor image as well just to make the restore process a little bit easier. So once you've selected this you're going to hit uh, swipe to backup and just let it do its thing. I'm going to cancel this because I don't need it. Am I too late? Oh no, okay. That is fine. So, uh, once you've made your backup, uh, I did pretty much forget to mention just then that you need to disable your screen lock, otherwise you may have some problems getting back into your device once you restore your backup. Uh, it's just something to do with 7.0 being annoying. So, uh, to fix that, I guess, all you need to do is um, there's a zip that you can flash uh, in TWRP that removes the screen lock. I'll leave that in the more info below if uh, you made a backup with the screen lock still enabled. I do apologize I forgot to mention that, but maybe you don't need a backup. So what we're going to do now is tap on install and locate wherever our files were copied over. You can see the Pure Nexus zip file is down here at the bottom. And we're just going to tap on that and swipe to confirm flash. Now that will just do its normal ROM flashing procedure where we can just wait a little bit uh, to, for it to flash its system and any other things that it may need. So this will add files, replace files, things like that and won't necessarily warrant a wipe. So this will keep all your data still there and nothing will have been erased. So it's just finishing flashing the system and I think it should flash a boot image or a kernel. There we go. So at this point, I think that it, you would need to reflash your root, your rooting zip. So super SU or magic, if the kernel has been replaced, I'm not sure the terminology isn't my thing just yet. 
But just in case, I'm going to flash Magisk again. Uh, there shouldn't be really any problems doing so. You can see that it's done its, uh, or installed itself properly. And same goes for SuperSU, you might want to reflash that as well. And then we're going to wipe the cache slash Davik. And this will increase our boot times by a little bit, but uh, it may give us, I guess, better performance um, once in a while. So you might as well. And one last thing we have to do before rebooting our system is that we'll need to flash the new vendor image that we also copied over. But you may be wondering that it hasn't actually appeared down here along with the zip files. That is because we need to tap on install image, the button down here, I'll just point to it, and that will reveal our vendor image that we can flash. So we'll tap on that and we'll select that it is a vendor image and we'll swipe to confirm flash. And that'll make sure that our device works, uh, well, the best that it can with the latest vendor image, one that is suitable for the ROM, and we're going to tap on reboot system. Now this boot up will maybe take a little bit longer like I've mentioned earlier after wiping the cache and Dalek. So I'll fast forward this until we get into pure Nexus again and hopefully we'll see that nothing has gone wrong and that our data is still there whilst having the updated pure Nexus builds. Now if we just take a look at the changelog real quick while our device is booting up and that can be located here. Uh, you can see they have an upcoming changelog already at the top here the next version. But you can see how we have a couple of changes here. Uh, the A lot of things for themers and we also have a little disturb tile, the do not disturb tile long press uh, to show the details instead of going to the settings page I think uh, which is definitely neat which I use that a lot and a, new f a, color, a few new features that are enabled as well and that looks pretty cool such as a enable recent kill as a floating action button. So I think fab is floating action button. Yeah, so we can have a look at that to make sure that we're on the latest version. And that should be it. So yeah, you can have a look at the change logs to see what's new. But uh, right now we'll wait for our device to turn on fully and then we'll take a look at some of the things that mentioned in the change log. So I'll be back when our phone finishes turning on and we'll see what's up. Okay, so as you can see, we have finished updating. Phone is turned on. And the system is just finishing our Android update, which is fine. It just means they are, I guess, finishing making run times for the apps and all that. So you know, we'll wait for that to finish or do its thing anyway. So I guess we can check out one of that, one of those new features. I guess first we can take a look at a, the About Phone. You can see we're on the 5th of February security patch level and we are on the 15th of the second Pure Nexus version, running the NUF26K vendor and the NGF26W, I guess, build. So we can have a look at, I guess, one of the features here, the floating action button in the recent apps. And there we go. And you can see it is there. So obviously that was one of the features, but as you can see, everything has remained the same. Everything still works and is uh, A-OK. -okay. So that is it guys, that is how we uh, update, I guess, a custom ROM, namely Pure Nexus, to the latest version of its own release. And this is how you do a dirty flash as well. So I guess one thing we should check is that if we are rooted, so I'm going to go over to Magisk, and it should say that we are properly rooted, and which we are. So thank you guys for watching, uh, I guess we can check the safety net thing as well, and that should be OK. And so yeah, thanks for watching guys, and I do have another ROM installation video coming up soon. Uh, very interesting, someone recommended that to me in the comments of another video. And it's something to do with uh, it, the screen being able to differentiate a finger touch, knuckle, and other things like that. Uh, to do different things, like gestures and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool, and I look forward to doing that actually. So thanks for watching this video guys. Um, if you have any suggestions or for future videos, things like that, uh, any channel suggestions as well, things that I could change to make things better, uh, feel free to leave them down in the comments below as well. I shall have a look at them and see what I can do about them. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one.